Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And welcome everyone to my YouTube um, To explain today's topic Which is uh, banking on the foreign exchange market Which is part one And uh, this presentation will take you uh, for uh, one hour of your time so today, uh, in this topic, I would like to brief to you uh, what is the uh, fundamental of understanding a foreign exchange market. Now, basically, what we want to understand here is that um, foreign exchange market is the uh, exchange of currency Um, of uh, one country for another uh, currency of another country which means that we have um, let me draw you so we have here uh, let's say for example I have USD and then what we want to do with the USD is that we want to exchange this currency from USD we want to go and buy or exchange with another currency for example Euro currency so that is what uh, foreign exchange is about and what exactly uh, is the foreign exchange market is that it is the uh, arena to which uh, a bank are able to transfer the purchasing power from one country to another in the form of currency. So this is basically what does uh, foreign exchange uh, currency means. And a typical example that I show you today uh, is basically is the exchange of uh, US dollar to ringgit Malaysia or the exchange of uh, euro to uh, Malaysia ringgit. So this is what uh, exactly uh, uh, exchange uh, of a currency. And what we have here is an example of the uh, exchange rate that we have. Now, basically, uh, the foreign exchange market can be uh, defined as the foreign exchange market is the arena to which one is able to transfer the purchasing power, which is to the buying uh, power, and also uh, provide credit for an international trade transaction, for example, for exporters, you know, to actually convert their currency or for importers to buy the currency to pay. Uh, for their international trade products and also as used to minimize the risk uh, exposure of exchange rate fluctuation that the international bank faces. So this is how uh, exchange, uh, for exchange uh, market works for international banks. And basically what we have here is how actually uh, the market uh, exists. So if we notice that the foreign exchange market is a market that uh, never sleeps, means that in one day, uh, the market of currency can open uh, all the day, from Monday right? from Monday, which is the working day, Monday. to Saturday, to Friday. So, means that participant uh, in the foreign exchange market, we can have uh, open and close at different time. For example, you know, as the world uh, evolve, okay, so we move, right, from uh, Asian market which opened earlier right uh, usually you know Malaysian time at 9am 
So we have Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, and then after that, uh, we will have a Middle East market that will open at 3 p.m. Malaysian time. So imagine that uh, when we move on as the time passes, so uh, after, for example, this uh, 6 p.m. Malaysian time, so when Malaysian close, uh, they, are, uh, they are banking uh, op uh, call operations, so the London market, uh, exchange market opens. So here, right, currency, for example, USD, right, Euro, so all the foreign currency, the major foreign currency can be traded 24 hours of uh, in a day. So also when London opens, uh, we have the transaction of USD, right? The buying and selling of the currency, Euro, right? Uh, so GBP, GBP is for the uh, London currency, right? So and then after that, move the time passes on, and then at 9 p.m. Malaysian time, it is uh, usually the New York Open. So at this time, you know, all uh, other markets, for example, the uh, Malaysian uh, market is already 9 p.m. night time, and then in the Middle East is already close at 6 p.m. Uh, so it's already closed so as time passes the other places location in the world opens their market so that is why we can say that uh, foreign currency is a currency that uh, opens uh, 24 hours and never sleep uh, banks and the foreign exchange market so the bank are the natural intermediary between foreign exchange supply and demand which is the buying and also the selling the main task of a foreign exchange department is to enable its commercial and financial customer to convert assets held in a currency into funds of another currency which is dominated in other uh, currency this conversion can take in the form of a spot transaction or a forward transaction. So the meaning of spot means that we are looking at the uh, time right? so here time say, say for example uh, the begin time is what we call uh, 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 what we call begin, okay, where the uh, negotiation starts, and then we finish with the delivery or payment. So usually it involved in the currency market is involved the payment so for a spot market usually the transaction that uh, involved in here usually uh, will um, finish within uh, one, two, two days. Means that on the second day, when the transaction is executed, this transaction will, uh, the bank that is involved with this transaction will ensure that the payment for the currency uh, being bought uh, is delivered to uh, the seller. So that is what we call spot transaction. Whereas in a forward transaction or forward operation, So the same thing here, 
right? We have here the timeline, right? And on the beginning part, right? Usually on the day of discussion, the uh, delivery and payment. usually happens more than two days this will be more than two days and always in the forward operation uh, the dates will be identified between the buyer and the seller which uh, how many days they have to uh, settle the payment so that is the difference between a uh, spot transaction and also the forward transaction the role of the bank in the foreign exchange market we want to understand what are their role so basically uh, their role is number one uh, banks are involved with the buying and selling of currency so that is the first uh, activity that they involve the bank also uh, will coordinate foreign exchange uh, hedging. So this will be a risk management uh, for uh, on behalf of the customer. And also the bank are also involved with arbitrage transaction. So it means that uh, taking care of buying and selling of a diff or mat of multiple currency. For example, you have. USD currency uh, you have euro and also maybe you have another third currency you have ringgit so example I show you, right, this is what we call triangle triang uh, arbitrage. So this is a position where uh, a bank can buy, uh, okay, so means that give the USD to Euro and also they will at the same time, right, sell euro for ringgit and then the bank also will convert the ringgit on USD in the matter of getting differences uh, so sometimes you know uh, in order to increase uh, the profitability of their fund in US dollar so instead of the US dollar to remain uh, what I call uh, static without any profitability so what the bank can do is that they enter into a arbitrage transaction where they estimated that the uh, ringgit to weaken means that the price of the conversion of ringgit uh, will be uh, have to pay more for the US dollar. Uh, so there is, this is the weakness of the ringgit. So looking at this arbitrage uh, situation, so they use a triangular uh, triangular arbitrage and looking at the euro and also the USD. So when the, a bank, let's say bank A, wants to make profitability, so they enter this uh, position in the foreign exchange market. So so they will get more income in this transaction because of the weakness in the ringgit market ringgit uh, currency rate if they expect that so this is one example how uh, banks can make money uh, in the foreign exchange market and also uh, banks also they uh, speculate movement so this one is what we call enter into uh, we call this pro 
proprietary trade Now let us understand why the foreign exchange market is needed. So as we understand that the activities in the foreign exchange market is cannot be avoided inevitable because every country in the world they have their own currency, their own currency, national currency. And also because of the international trade that happen uh, between the uh, exporters and importers happens and that is why there is a need for foreign exchange currency to exchange one currency to another example here USD and then to go to Euro Uh, for example, uh, we can see this example between an importer and exporter. So we have for importer, right, normally right, they want to uh, purchase a currency uh, in order to make the payment for the purchases of the imports to the seller. Whereas for the exporter, uh, what they want to do is that they want to convert uh, the amount of currency that they receive for example US dollar right from the payment receive right and then they want to convert the USD into their local home currency which is the ringgit uh, so this is a Malaysian exporter so in in this kind of activity in the international trade that is why there is a need uh, for foreign exchange uh, market to be used uh, in the uh, international trade um, the mode of payment that can be done options that can be done is they can uh, either have the option to use their own currency or they have they can have the option to pay in the exporter's currency or the third option that the uh, importer can use is to use a neutral currency for example a, a global currency so usually a global currency more acceptable by all the participant in the international trade is usually the US dollar so this is the option of currency. and usually uh, when uh, the importer and exporter uh, decided to use the global currency right so means that there will uh, be a need for the participant to use the foreign currency market to exchange uh, US dollar uh, amount into uh, the currency that they want to use now let us look at uh, one important element in the foreign exchange uh, market which is the uh, how we want to uh, give the rates of exchange in the currency market so if you look here there are actually two types of uh, how the rate of exchange can be uh, quoted so because when we have a uh, buying or we want to have a uh, selling so let's say that we want to convert uh, this US dollar So, what we want to know if what will be the exchange rate for let's say that you want to convert uh, US dollar into ringgit Malaysia
and say example uh, for example we have the buying and selling so we in the market Right, the buyer or the seller can be located uh, in the uh, what we call uh, two two place, which is uh, number one, uh, foreign which is outside the. Uh, uh, origin of the country currency or local uh, so that is why when we have uh, people coming from the foreign currency a uh, foreign location foreign places so they will have a different uh, what I call code And when we have a local, uh, means that people that is in the domestic market, we also have a different code. Now, let us now understand our uh, number one. Uh, we want to understand uh, what is the uh, price of the exchange rate when it is being uh, having a direct quotation or another name for it is a price quotation so example a direct quotation or a price quotation it is a rate of a currency of such a, a of a foreign currency that is expressed when the foreign currency Right, is the commodity, uh, which is means that the the currency that is is being exchanged. Okay, commodity means that uh, something that uh, the 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 what you call the uh, currency that is going to be uh, exchanged with another uh, currency. So that is what we call commodity. For example, here, if you look at the location, all right, now, let's say that we are here, Malaysian, so we are in, uh, let's say, the, in, the currency involved here is between uh, USD and also uh, Malaysia Ringgit. All right, so because we are here in Malaysia, and that is why we want to change the US dollar currency, which is a commodity, into MYR right and here what we understand right is that in a direct quotation you will know that uh, one foreign currency unit will equal to how much will be the amount in the home currency unit so always the word amount here is always in the commodity always one unit in the foreign currency and this on the home currency will be the amount of uh, currency that will be received in the home currency so if you look here we have here the uh, foreign currency right for example US dollar is one US dollar and it will in Malaysia if we are located in Malaysia so this will be in terms of Malaysia ringgit so the home currency amount right for one dollar of USD will equal to uh, Malaysia ringgit 3.8 uh, so this is the exchange rate that is expressed in a direct quotation or we can call this the price quotation how much needed to be paid for the local currency 
for one unit of commodity currency so you must understand the term commodity and also the term reference currency and in Japan right so we will have uh, people interested to convert the currency from a foreign currency let's say US dollar in this example into Japanese yen so this is how you will see the quotation in a price quotation or direct quotation so it means how much will one US dollar will get in terms of the Japanese yen which is one US dollar is equal to uh, 121.75 Japanese yen so we see that the US dollar is quoted as commodity currency and the amount that is converted is the reference currency at this side so always remember in a price quotation amount that is expressed as one unit of foreign currency is the commodity currency and the amount of the uh, tra uh, trans uh, uh, conversion uh, received will be the reference currency of the home currency unit uh, so remember this amount now, we move next into another way how a price, uh, how uh, the exchange rate of a currency can be exchanged in another expression. So we have another expression, which is the terms we use indirect quotation or we use volume. Volume means uh, in terms of uh, the big size. How is the big? And when we want to understand here, right, we look at this example, right, the rate is uh, in indirect quotation, it is a rate expressed such that uh, the reference currency will become the foreign currency and the local currency will become the commodity currency so in the indirect quotation that is why we will receive uh, the uh, how the uh, quotation will be expressed so if we are in uh, example this australia so in a indirect quotation the australia dollar will be in the form of one amount of uh, home currency so the expression will be australian dollar one so for aussie dollar one so how much will be equal to the uh, foreign currency uh, so this will be the foreign currency will be the reference currency in this kind of quotation or what we call uh, volume quotation so the same thing here right if we are in the UK United Kingdom so the rate right of the local currency will be one sterling pound Right. so one sterling pound is equal to how much of US dollar which is the foreign currency that is expressed in the reference currency so you can notice that uh, between the direct quotation and indirect quotation it's just a matter of difference where is the location of the foreign currency whether the foreign currency is 
the commodity or the foreign currency is the reference whether this one is commodity or whether this one becomes reference and always uh, in the payment or the settlement of the payment always um, buyer right we always settle uh, the amount using the rate of the reference rate uh, so this is what uh, we want to focus on what how much will be paid so this is using the reference whereas in the commodity is looking at what is being traded uh, so what is being traded is the this commodity so what always looking at an amount of nominal one and then we will get in reference uh, in terms of how much uh, how much we'll get so this one will always equal to how much so that is how we want to understand the difference between direct versus indirect. So that is how we can understand the um, price being quoted in the foreign currency. Now, uh, how uh, are FX rates is quoted? So most of current country uses direct quotation, which means that the foreign currency will be the commodity currency, right? Here. Yeah foreign currency will be commodity currency and then the local currency will become uh, the reference rate which is how much to be paid and in the FX rates quoted so when bank deals among each other dealers which is uh, people that do the trade right dealers do the trade So they normally uh, quote in US dollar rates. And then the values of the various local currency are expressed by indicating the price of one dollar, right? Which is the that commodity in how much is expressed in the local currency, which is the reference. So that is why we have here this is the exchange rate that normally you will see. Uh, in the foreign exchange market okay now some exception on the norms of the currency uh, expression is that some is being quoted using uh, uh, what we call indirect quotation for example uh, they are based on uh, some uh, commonwealth country for example Australia right you also have uh, sterling pound. So in trading in the forex exchange market, so you have quotation that will be expressed as uh, AUD, Australian dollar, equals to 
how much is in terms of USD okay same thing as here GBP then what is in terms of US dollar another way to express uh, the way how to write the quotation right we can have this a slash okay GBP USD so it's easier so we have here for example you let's say for example this one okay so we have the rate GBP 1 equals to USD 1.5855 so we have another way to write so here GBP slash USD right is 1.5855 Okay, that is how you can write the foreign currency quotation. This is for certain country, uh, as this being explained, Commonwealth country. Commonwealth country that meaning that countries that uh, last time was occupied by uh, UK, by the England government in the history. Now, finally, in this presentation, uh, US dollar as the uh, commodity currency, the reason why uh, US dollar is the commodity currency. So, because US dollar is widely accepted for various reasons as the vehicle currency for the world trade and financial settlement, it has assumed the role of the commodity currency for almost all international foreign exchange dealing. So that is the reason why US dollar is being accepted as the uh, commodity currency in the international trade. So that is all the presentation for part one, which is the introduction to the foreign exchange market. So I hope that we will uh, discuss further on part two of the foreign exchange market in the next presentation. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.